Continuing on here again with our superset from Chapter 3. Uh, this again is page 74, and we're going to talk a little bit here about font and color now. So this is on the very bottom of 74, uh, and the very last bullet point here says, use only two font typefaces per page. And what I can tell you is, eh, okay, that, that may kind of be true. Um, so at this point, what I would like for you to do is hold down, depending on whether or not you are on a Mac or a PC, hold down the control or the command button uh, and click on modules over on the left hand side. Um, once you've clicked on modules, let's go down to module two and inside of module two what you will see is a web page, so uh, one of the pages in there and it is called fonts and colors. It's going to look a little differently for you. I'm here on my iPad versus on a desktop, but you are looking at fonts and colors. And what I have for you here on this page is not a tremendously large page, but the, the cache of value here is tremendous. So the first thing we want to talk about is fonts. Uh, and that, I'm not sure I can highlight for you guys. I cannot. Uh, is kind of the middle of the page here. Fonts available to your device. Now, here's a word on fonts. There's really two places where you can locate fonts. Again, the font is how it is that a word or a paragraph or even more content looks to your unknown potential future user, right? So we're all accustomed to Times New Roman. Times New Roman is the default font in Internet Explorer. It is the default font in uh, Microsoft Word, things like that. Um, so the font face is Times New Roman. The font family is Serif. Serif, remember again from the previous uh, or one of the previous uh, examples here, means feet. It's got those little horizontal and vertical lines on there uh, to help theoretically guide your eyes left to right and up and down on a page. Uh, and it has a font size, usually 12 point. Now, Times New Roman is not always available to every machine out there. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the fonts you're maybe potentially going to choose may not be available to everybody out there. Um, just as a demonstration, while you are here on uh, this page, Fonts and Colors, Go ahead and again hold down either command or control so that you can open one of these two tools, Flipping Typical or Wordmark.it. Now, my favorite is Flipping Typical, and that's the one I'm going to use here. Uh, so go ahead and command or control click that so that this keeps playing in the background, hopefully, uh, while you can see the page there. Um, what I've got here is Flipping Typical. What this does, and which is pretty neat, uh, is Flipping Typical runs a little JavaScript uh, script, frankly. Uh, and what it does is it asks the current device you're on for what fonts are available. So if I scroll down, you'll see I have, ooh, roughly speaking, probably 48 or so um, fonts available to my iPad by default. Now, the number that you are going to have is going to be different based on whatever your machine is, right? So if you're on a Windows machine, you're going to have a range of default fonts available to you. If you have a Mac, you're going to have a different range of default fonts available to you. Uh, if you've never installed or if you have installed Word, more fonts. If you have Adobe uh, software like Illustrator or InDesign, you're going to have a huge wealth of font faces available to you. Um, so these are available to me presently. Um, and if you kind of, you know, scroll down and look at any of these, you can see what a piece of your content is going to look like based on what the font face is. So if I come over here to uh, Avenir Condensed, uh, this is uh, Avenir and the, the Avenir family is a relatively common used web font. Um, you can see what Rock Valley College, because I'm a corporate stool, uh, looks like. Uh, if I click on Papyrus, uh, Papyrus is that garbage font that people use 
in their email signatures to make them feel as though they are, in fact, I don't know, educated or something. Uh, so that's what papyrus would look like. Arial, uh, that's what you use when you have a two-page paper that you're hoping to extend to three pages. That's what Arial would look like. So you can tap on the names of any of these, uh, Menlo, Georgia, Futura, um, and see what that font is going to look like. Now, again, this has a, a shortcoming, and that shortcoming is that it is impossible for me to say, as a developer, what kinds of fonts are going to be available to my unknown potential future clients, because they may have a completely different font set than I do. Um, even better would be to use an external tool. Now, the external tool we are going to use, and one of the best, largest, freest, um, I think freest is a word, I'm an American, it doesn't mean I speak English, best, largest, freest font libraries is right here at Google Fonts. So again, uh, command or control click Google Fonts, and I can't open it from here. It is fonts.google.com. There is another video in the series on how to use fonts.google.com, um, but what I can tell you is essentially this. Google Fonts will give you a small, uh, free um, clip, and you can use just a copy and paste inside of either a web page, which again is terrible because that will create either an inline or an embedded piece of CSS. Even better, you can copy and paste the external CSS. And that means you would simply paste the code that Google will give you into the very first line of your CSS and automatically you have access to the external CSS from Google. What that will do is make whatever font you choose. Um, so Roboto is the name of a Google created font. And it's not available any place that's not a Google device unless you use an external style with it. Um, and it's fantastic. And what Google Fonts enables you to do is as long as your web client, so whoever your unknown potential future user is, as long as they have a web client that's available and on the internet, and they must be, right? Because they're already getting your web property. Um, they can, as you know, whatever your web page is loading, they'll go out and they'll grab just that font from Google. And the way you design your page with the fonts that you design for your page is guaranteed to work the same way with the, um, with the Google font. And that is huge. And we are going to see an example in a future video. And we are definitely going to use this from here on out when we develop our web projects in class. So flipping typical and wordmark.it are great places if you just want really quick access to um, very probably common fonts like Papyrus, like Avenir, like Futura, like Georgia, like Tahoma, like Comic Sans, which is terrible. Um, but Google Fonts is even better because that gives you a huge cache of available fonts that's on the internet and that will help guarantee that your unknown potential future clients see your fonts in the same way that you do.